So a lot of people in the GTA community are fascinated by trigger levels introduced to the game by 2.1. But, due to its insanely high learning curve, very few people actually know how to effectively make anything with 2.1 triggers. 2.1 is, in my opinion, the most important, largest update in the game for many reasons. The most significant one being the new triggers that were added, the capabilities that they added are truly limitless. This series is intended to be a somewhat open-ended tutorial that showcases the basics of trigger coding, and the rest I leave up to your creativity. With that out of the way, boot up GD, grab a drink, and let's jump right in. We stand at the beginnings of making a trigger master out of you, but first, we must learn the most basic thing, spawning. You're probably asking, Motley, what in the world is spawning? To which I respond, the most important part of trigger coding. Without it, all of this would quite literally be impossible. Now, what does it do? We, of course, know that normally a trigger activates whenever the player goes directly past it, and only in that exact scenario does it activate. That's all cool and good, but what if we want to have a trigger that can activate at any time? Enter spawning. To explain a little better, when a trigger is set to be spawned, going under, above, inside, or anywhere does nothing. The trigger will only activate when its group is spawned with a spawn trigger. This is probably confusing you a whole lot, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say I want to make this wall move upwards a few blocks so I can pass under it. So I assign the wall to group 1, and I place a trigger that moves group 1 up by 3 blocks. For demonstration purposes, I'll put the move past the wall, so normally you would never be able to reach it. I then turn on the spawn triggered option inside of the move. Notice how even when I clip through the wall and under the move, nothing happens? This is where the magic starts. I go to the move trigger and assign it to group 2. Crazy, right? Then, I place a shiny new spawn trigger to the left of the wall and put group 2 inside of it. Notice how, when I pass under the spawn trigger, the move magically activates even though we're nowhere near it. I could put this move trigger literally anywhere on the entire map and it would still activate. Thus, the magic of spawn. Diving a little deeper, it's obvious that I can add a delay to it. Watch as the move activates one second after passing the spawn. Also, notice how this trigger has the ability to be spawned as well? This means that you can spawn a spawn that spawns spawns and, well, you get the point. The spawn trigger activates every trigger with the group specified so you can spawn as many triggers as you like at once. The stop trigger works very similarly, almost like a reverse spawn. Let's take a move trigger that makes group 1 follow the player's X for 999 seconds, and also assign it to group 2. Say we want to stop group 1 from following along, so you place a stop trigger that stops group 2. And bam, like magic, we left group 1 behind. In the dark. Alone. And with that, the end of episode 1. Let's review what we learned. We discovered that a spawn trigger can activate another trigger in a specific group regardless of where it is, even with a delay. We found out that enabling spawn trigger means the trigger will not activate at all, ever, until it is spawned. And finally, we learned that a stop trigger is effectively the opposite of a spawn. It deactivates any trigger in a group regardless of where it is. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm trying my best to deliver the highest quality video possible. My goal is to help you guys do amazing things. GD Triggers actually translates fairly well into real life coding, so I hope the knowledge I'm passing on to you helps in some way. I'm more than happy that you're even watching to this point, so thank you so much. I owe you guys everything. In episode 2, we'll be learning how to count and compare variables, geometry dash style. 
This episode provides the basic foundation for everything we'll learn in the future, so please stay tuned if you're interested in the series. Thanks for watching.